Consider now two graphs, not multigraphs, so there's no multi edges. So G1 has nodes V1 and set of edges E1, and G2 has set of nodes V2 and set of edges E2. We would call these two graphs isomorphic if and only if there is a bijection mapping v1 to v2, f mapping v1 to v2, such that the edge xy is in e1 if and only if it has a corresponding f of x, f of y, which is an edge in e2. So just linguistically, isomorphic, iso meaning same or equal, morph meaning shape. So the same sort of shape. So if I look at these two visualizations here, these are two graphs, they're obviously not the same. One of them has the five nodes A, B, C, D, E. One of them has five nodes one, two, three, four, five. But they are all they are both graphs which have five nodes and which have um, eight edges. So if I think and I define the function f to be a mapping that maps node A to node 1, node B to node 5, node C to node 3, D to 2, and E to 4, that if I just sort of relabeled them and moved the edges about, not breaking any connections, not adding any connections, I could reshape those two graphs to be to look the same. It's not instantly obvious that I could. But if I kind of visualize sort of pulling the center node E towards the right edge, then it would look um, more like node four, and then just obviously moving the labels around. So it, it's not instantly obvious always to spot possible graph isomorphisms, but these two graphs are isomorphic. Now we say that a statement P is invariant for a graph isomorphism if and only if I have two isomorphic graphs G1 and G2, where every time the statement P is true for G1, it's true for G2. Now we won't prove all of these, but there are properties which are always invariant for isomorphic graphs. Well, the trivial ones are the graph has n nodes obviously can't be isomorphic if it doesn't have the same number of nodes similarly it can't be isomorphic if it doesn't have the same number of edges a connected graph can't be isomorphic to a non-connected graph Now these other ones are a little bit less obvious, that it doesn't just have the same number of nodes, it has the same number of nodes of each degree. And lastly with circuits, it has the same number of circuits of each possible length. Now the thing to note is, if we're trying to assess whether two graphs are isomorphic and I haven't defined that by ejection. I can't say that they are isomorphic because it because they satisfy any one or two of these invariants. I can't say this graph's got 10 edges, therefore it's isomorphic to this graph with 10 edges. But I can do the opposite. I can say this graph has 10 edges, the other graph has 11 edges, therefore they're not isomorphic. So I can't justify being isomorphic 
on the grounds of one of these things that would be invariant, one of these statements that would be invariant if they were isomorphic, but I can rule out isomorphism by failing one of these. So if I look at these two graphs here, top graph, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 is the node, the inner graph, so the lower graph, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. Well, they both got eight nodes, so they could be isomorphic at that point. I haven't ruled out isomorphism based on the number of nodes. They both have 12 edges, so I haven't ruled out um, isomorphism based on either the number of nodes or the number of edges. Well, the first graph has circuits of length 5 because I can go 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 4, 4 to 5, and then cut across to the middle 5 to 1. So I can get from node 1 back to node 1 with a path length of 5. In the second graph, the lower graph, there is no node where I can get back to it in 5 moves. So the fact there are circuits of length 5 in the top graph and there's no circuit of length 5 in the bottom graph means that these graphs are not isomorphic.